Rule 4.6 of the rules of golf seems pretty clear when it comes to the distance golf balls can go. It states that the combined carry and roll of the ball when tested on apparatus approved by the USG and RNA must not exceed the distance specified under the conditions set forth in the overall distance standard for golf balls. Since the overall distance standard currently cannot be greater than 317 yards, the answer to the question of whether all golf balls go the same distance would appear to be obvious, because why would any manufacturer make a ball that cannot go as far as the rules allow? Listen to the marketing of the golf ball manufacturers for too long also, and you will likely come away convinced that every ball will give you the maximum possible distance, both off the tee and with all your clubs. But that is clearly not the case, and given the huge amount of golf ball options available today, 1,229 according to the latest list of conforming golf balls, it can be difficult to work out what ball will give you the most distance, especially when all golf balls look and feel the same when you pick them up. So in this video to help you choose which will be the best distance ball for you, we try and break down the science to explain how hard or soft, heavy or light, new or old a golf ball is affects distance and whether one type goes further than the other. That there are over 1200 golf balls available in today's golf market may feel like bad news when it comes to working out whether hard or soft, in other words, higher or lower compression golf balls go further. But the positive bit of all the golf ball technology which has hit the game over the past couple of decades is that it is now more possible than ever for all players, whatever their budget and standard, to have access to the best compression of golf ball that not only goes the furthest for their own swing, but also suits their overall game. Before we get into whether hard or soft or even super soft golf balls go further though, let's just briefly confirm how we can tell whether a golf ball is hard or soft. In short, a compression scale between 30 to 110 is used to let golfers know how hard or soft a golf ball is. When it is smashed by a club, a golf ball changes shape for a split second and how much it changes shape will determine its compression rating. And put simply, a harder golf ball will change shape less than a softer one. Therefore, as you probably have guessed already, a harder golf ball will have a higher compression number, closer to the 110 end of the scale, while a softer ball will have a lower compression number. So does one type clearly go further than the other? As a whole, harder or higher compression golf balls go further when played by golfers with higher swing speeds towards 100 miles an hour. These players, however, lose distance with soft or super soft balls that players with lower swing speeds of less than 80 miles an hour can hit further due to the higher launch and hang times these balls give them. Unfortunately though, while this rule of thumb relative to swing speed is correct, the story does not end there and it's worth bearing in mind a few more details when choosing which ball is best for you, not only distance wise, but for your overall game. Firstly, to make things a bit more complicated, all the golf ball manufacturers use their own compression machine, which means there is no industry standard compression number you can use to help you make your choice of ball. For example, if Titleist used their compression machine to measure a tailor-made golf ball, it would give a different compression value to the one tailor-made's own machine tells it it is. In addition, while some manufacturers in their marketing material will give you a golf ball's overall compression, Others will tell you the compression number of only the core part of the golf ball. There's not therefore any exact comparative value to be found in the golf ball makers provided compression numbers, but it will still give you a general idea of where it fits in the overall hard versus soft scale. Secondly, your own swing and how you strike the ball also affects the distance you can get with a hard or soft golf ball in addition to your swing speed. Golfers with higher swing speeds towards 100 miles an hour and above, for example, will use harder balls because the amount of force they hit the ball with is so great that the ball benefits from having less interaction time with the club face. If you tend to slice the golf ball, however, due to the club face being slightly open at impact and you use a golf ball that is too hard, it is going to be even further offline because the reduced interaction time with the club face will result in even more side spin being put in the ball. If a slicer uses a softer ball though, it's going to stay in the face for a little bit longer and result in a slightly straighter shot, which will more than likely travel further. And if you slice the ball with a very slow swing speed, 
a really soft golf ball will potentially be the best choice for longer and straighter shots. By comparison, if you tend to draw your golf shots, you may find a soft ball that stays in the face too long results in a hook which a harder golf ball would help correct to maintain both distance and accuracy. So while your swing speed will undoubtedly help guide you to the correct end of the hard or soft scale, where you sit within that band will also be impacted by your swing and what shape of shot you most often play with. With the average male golfer averaging a swing speed of approximately 93 miles an hour and women senior and junior golfers typically recording swing speeds of between 60 and 80 miles an hour, it seems clear a lot of amateur golfers should be, play, should be using golf balls towards the softer end of the scale. Playing a golf ball which is too hard for you, as we have noted, simply can make an already very hard game even harder because these balls will not only not go as far, but also be even further offline than normal. Softer golf balls for the majority of golfers who have slower swing speeds will by comparison launch higher with less spin and go further and straighter off the tee. As with everything in golf though, there are compromises that have to be made and that using a softer ball will likely result in you having to give up some control in short iron and short game shots. But given the long game is more important than the short game according to the stats, the distance benefits of choosing the right compression of golf ball for your swing should outweigh any downsides. While this may all seem overly complicated, the great news is that the advances in golf ball tech in recent years have meant there are a bunch of hard and soft golf ball options available for every standard of player at virtually every price point. Rule 4.2 in the rules of golf states that the weight of the ball must not be greater than 1.62 ounces or 45.93 grams. However, there is no corresponding minimum weight stated. As a result, golf ball manufacturers can design a golf ball as light as they want, but is there any distance advantage in making a golf ball lighter than the maximum weight permitted in the rules? As a general rule, heavier golf balls go further than lighter ones because it is more able to effectively travel through the airflow pushing against it. It is for this reason that a maximum weight of golf ball is set by the rules as any ball weighing over 1.62 ounces would give an unfair advantage. When it comes to weight, therefore, manufacturers target their designs to produce a golf ball weight which is as close as possible to the limit for the simple reason that if, that if they don't do this, physics says they are putting the user of it at a disadvantage. Or to put it another way, if lighter golf balls travelled further, there would be no reason for the USGA and RNA, RNA to set up an upper limit for weight in the rules. As they continue to push the limits of golf ball design, Manufacturers do occasionally produce balls which are over the weight limit, but this happens very rarely and is usually the result of a bad batch being delivered from the production line. This is why, however, balls are weighed prior to the start to professional competitions to ensure no player has a weight advantage. When it comes to the diameter of golf balls, however, the rules this time specify a minimum measurement. A golf ball must not be less than 1.68 inches or 42.67 millimetres across. So in theory, there is no maximum size a golf ball can be as long as it conforms to all the other standards, including weight. The Callaway Supersoft Max golf ball is one example of an oversized ball measuring 0.05 inches above the minimum size with a diameter of 1.73 inches. It does not, however, weigh any more than the maximum permitted. And the reason for its bigger size is it allows Callaway to make the ball's center of gravity slightly higher and that is very good for slower swing speed players, including juniors and seniors, who often need a big, bit of extra help to get the ball in the air. As a whole, however, smaller golf balls go further than larger ones if the weight of the two is equal. This is because a smaller diameter means less air resistance, and as a result, the smaller 1.62 inch diameter golf balls used in Europe until 1990 travelled further than the 1.68 inch American ball. Thankfully though, since 1990, the USGA and RNA, RNA have now agreed in the minimum diameter for golf balls at 1.68 inches, so there's no longer any need for golfers playing either side of the Atlantic to buy two different types of golf ball depending on where they are playing. Distance is critical in golf, and despite the myths which, you have, which have developed from phrases such as you drive for show but you putt for dough, it is the long game according to the stats that explains two-thirds of the difference in scores between your typical amateur golfers. 
An extra 20 yards increase in driving distance will reduce a typical 100 scoring golfer score by 2.3 strokes per round. So if part of that gain can come from using a newer golf ball each time you tee it up, it would make sense to use one as much as possible rather than an old used one. As a general rule, new golf balls do not go further than used off golf balls. However, according to multiple tests, comparing new golf balls with used old ones of varying quality. Modern golf balls are very durable and tested to withstand swing speeds of 125 miles an hour. However, golf balls older than 20 years will not go as far. There are clearly two almost distinct elements that affect the perceived quality of an old golf ball versus a brand new one. First is of course age, and a ball can be termed old simply by the fact that it is a certain number of years old, even if it has hardly been played with. And secondly, there is the state of an old golf ball, which although it may only be a couple of months old, may have been played with in many multiple rounds of golf. The good news, however, is that modern golf balls are generally exceptionally durable and are designed and tested to be able to withstand repeated hits by clubs being swung at up to speeds of 125 miles an hour. And just to put that into perspective, the average swing speed in the PGA Tour is around 114 miles an hour. So what that typically means from a distance perspective is that new golf balls do not go further than old and used golf balls made within the last 20 years or so. To highlight this, Plugged In Golf, along with Club Champion, tested a new Titleist Pro V1 ball against four different old used Pro V1s and refinish balls, and found that the old used balls went almost identical distances to the brand new ball when hit with driver. Similar controlled tests by Practical Golf has off, have also found the same thing, and while it must be noted these tests were carried out in one of the most expensive balls in the market, and that other less expensive balls may not potentially get the same results, these tests highlight that the durability of the modern golf ball should not be underestimated. Even those multi-layered balls with the softer covers are pretty resilient these days, and although an old used ball may not look as pleasing in the eye as you would wish, your shots are not going to lose distance as a result of playing it. Saying all that, however, there is a limit to this statement in respect of the age with which we would define old. In the 1990s, the most popular ball on the PGA Tour was the Titleist Professional Wound Ball, which was made with thread windings wrapped around a small liquid or solid centre. That started to change in 2000, however, when, following on the back of advances made by Top Flight and Bridgestone, Titleist introduced the Solid Core Pro V1. And within a year, no winner of any of the major professional golf tour events was using a wound golf ball. And one of the main reasons for this was distance. Golfers prior to that point needed to use a soft balata ball to ensure control with their iron and short game shots, but with the introduction of the solid core and multi-layer ball at the turn of the century, players were able to enjoy the best of both worlds. Firstly, a good ball speed off the driver with low spin, which gives you distance, thanks to the solid core, but also secondly, lots of spin with shorter irons and wedges, thanks to the use of the outer layer surrounding that core during the long interaction of the club face at slower shot swing speeds. PGA professional Ali Taylor recently carried out a test of modern Titleist Pro V1X with a 30-year-old Titleist Tour Balata ball and found these results when it came to the distance gap between the two balls when using a driver. So when we say new balls don't do in general go further than old balls, we really mean they don't go further than some old balls which are not over 20 years old. Because if you find a really old ball in the trees or lake, it may be worth just leaving it there as you may be giving up a bunch of distance if you bring it back into play after all this time. Just remember though, distance is only one of the factors you base your choice of golf ball on. It may feel counterintuitive, but you should choose your golf ball from the green backwards, seeing first how it feels and sounds off the putter, then when chipping and pitching, with your irons, and finally with your driver. Feel is the key factor, after price of course, when it comes to choosing a golf ball. And whatever you do, just don't make the mistake of using a different type of golf ball every time you play. Because if you do that, you will pay the price not only in distance, but throughout your whole game also. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out our other great videos in Golfing Focus. And most importantly, enjoy your golf.